get the information that you need to. So you're gonna find the y-intercept. And according to this principle right here, the procedure, to find the y-intercept on the graph of the equation, let x equal zero and solve for y. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. You can do either one first, it doesn't really matter. So you're gonna make x equal zero and then solve for y. Well, right here you get y equals two, four thirds of x, sorry, not x, four thirds times zero minus two. And this is zero, four thirds times zero is zero. So y equals two is negative two. So the, the y-intercept is y equals negative two, it's right here. Negative one, negative two is right here. Okay, that's my first one. The second point, I am gonna find the x-intercept. And the way I find it is I make y equals zero and solve for x. So I get zero equals to four thirds of x minus two. So the first thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna add two to both sides. It's like solving any equation. So you get two equals two, four thirds of x. Yeah, I don't like to work with x on the right. I prefer to write with, to work with x on the left. So I usually commute those two, okay? And I write four thirds of x equals two. It's the same thing, it's just in, it's just, I just uh, alter the, the, the order. I put the right, the right side first and then the left side. Now here, how do we, how do we get rid of that four thirds? I want somebody to tell me. Divide by four thirds? I mean, if I have a five here, how would I get rid of that five? If I had five x, let's say I have five x equals two, how do I remove that five? Divide by five, right? So here I have four thirds. Do I do the same thing? Yeah, indeed we do. Now, yes, we do exactly that. So I'm going to divide by both sides by four thirds. By a four third of x equals two, I'm gonna divide by four thirds. The problem is that when you divide it by a fraction, things get sticky because it's, oh, what do I do now? There is no mechanism to divide by a fraction that we know. There's no algorithm that directly allows to do it that division. We have to change that division by a fraction to a multiplication by the reciprocal. Remember we mentioned that a moment ago? Okay. So what is the reciprocal of four thirds? Did you think of it last time? What's the reciprocal of four thirds? Three, four. Three, four, thank you. So I'm actually going to multiply by the reciprocal of three, four. It's the same as dividing by the fraction, okay? So I'm gonna multiply this by three, four here and here. Again, I am dividing by four thirds, but I'm, I'm, I'm jumping over that concept and I'm changing the division by a fraction to a multiplication by the reciprocal of okay. it. So these two, they don't do each other and they end up with x equals two. Two times three is six over four. Can I simplify six over four? What would be the simplest form of x, six over four? How much? 1.5. Okay, this would be the decimal representation of, of it, indeed. Can I write this as a simpler, simpler fraction? What would that be? If you were to convert 1.5 to a fraction, what would that be? What would it look like? I can see. How much? 3 over 2. 3 over 2, yes. 
So 6 over 4, the simplest form of 6 over 4 is actually 3 over 2. If I divide 6 by 2, you get 3. If I divide 4 by 2, I get 2. That's what it means. But as, as I mentioned before, 1.5 is a little bit more useful for me to put in the, cal in, in the graph than 3 over 2. Because 3 over 2, what is 3 over 2, okay? Sometimes it's harder to figure out what a fraction is on, on it. So at this level, x equals to 3 over 2, that is the, the what, sorry, what we're looking for, the x-intercept. I happen as x equals 1.5. So x equals 1, 2, 1 1.5 is right here, between 1 and, in the middle between 1 and 2, which is 3 half, okay? Now that I have two points, I can actually trace my line. So I'm going to trace my line right here. I am, let's see, this would be something that looks like that. Now, do I need a third point? No. Is it recommended? Yes, to use a third point. But if you use two points, that would be sufficient for you to be able to trace your. So the graph of x equals a. You see many equations like x equals negative 2 or x equals 5 or x equals 3. The graph of x equals negative 2 is a vertical line. Anybody here does not understand the word vertical? Vertical means going straight up, okay? It's a line that's going to go straight up or down. We'll get into the slope of that in the next class, but for now, <coughs> remember that that's what it is. It's simply a vertical line. And it says every point, every point on that graph is going to look like this. A comma zero. It could be any number. So, for example, graph x equals negative 2. So I'll look for negative 2 right here, negative 1, negative 2 right here. All the points are going to be on the vertical line passing through like that right here. This one right here is, is uh, negative 2 comma 0. This one right here is going to be negative 2 comma 2. This point right here is going to be negative 2 comma 4. And I don't know, this point right here is going to be equal to negative 2 comma negative 3. So all the points in there are going to have an x value of negative 2. Capish? This is not new. You went through this multiple times, in, for sure in Algebra 1 and in Algebra 2, for sure. Okay, so with that in mind, take a moment and graph x equals 2. You should be able to do that, so be prepared to share. I'm going to call the name randomly in just a moment. Yeah, don't, don't put anything over that in the pen. It's very sensitive. <coughs> I wish I could regulate the sensitivity a little. So it's simply going to be a horizontal line passing through. There you go. Go ahead and trace the line so they see they can see where the line goes. All right. Thank you. 